Hello YouTube, welcome to another microprocessor tutorial. In this tutorial, we, we are going to understand a more intricate example of an instruction from the perspective of timing diagrams. As I mentioned in the previous tutorial, timing diagrams, they make real sense and you'll be able to make them correctly if if you know the instructions inside out if you know the working of the instruction properly only then you'll be able to interpret the machine cycles and you'll be able to draw correct timing diagrams so time and again I emphasize on understanding the instructions uh, in more precise way now, in this tutorial, I want to take up an interesting instruction uh, which is stacks B. In 8085, this instruction is an example of indirect addressing. Now, what happens in this instruction is that this instruction is going to copy the contents of the accumulator to an external memory location whose address is specified by the register pair BC let us suppose that BC is storing 5006 so what will happen at the end of the day is at location 5006 the contents of the accumulator let us say XX will be written now stacks b itself is a one byte instruction and the hexadecimal code for stacks b is 02 so if this instruction was to be executed we'll need to write this instruction in some memory location and we take up the classical example of the memory location 2000H and we'll write this instruction in the memory location 2000H so step number one will be our program counter will point to 2000 and in simpler terms in in more understandable statement we can say microprocessor will write 2000 H on address bus and it will go to this location to fetch the opcode for our instruction stacks B. Now fetching the opcode for stacks B would mean that it will bring 02H into instruction register as opcode fetch machine cycle. So In the step number one, microprocessor will point to 2000H. It will bring 02 by placing it on the data lines and bring it in to instruction register where it will be interpreted as stacks B, uh, which means that we need to copy the contents of accumulator to an external memory location whose address is pointed by the BC register pair. 
and of course in, uh, in the second step microprocessor will place the contents of accumulator on data bus and it will send it to the memory location 5006 which is an arbitrary value that we have put into the register BC so this step number two will be regarded as memory write machine cycle now this is again a classical example of an instruction being a one byte instruction whereas it has two machine cycles and the machine cycles can only be determined by understanding the flow of events happening after the execution of the instruction the number of bytes has got nothing to do with the machine cycles of the instruction except for the fact that every instruction will be at least one byte and to bring that one byte into microprocessor one opcode fetch machine cycle is essentially required but other than that there is no rule of thumb that relates the number of bytes present in the instruction to the number of machine cycles which are executed by the instruction so that being said we'll progress further into drawing the actual timing diagram for this instruction for that we know that opcode fetch machine cycle takes 4 T states and memory write will take 3 T states so we'll try and make seventy states it's better to segregate them beforehand uh, the first four will represent opcode fetch machine cycle the next three will represent memory write machine cycle and we plan to show address lines AD0 to AD7 multiplexed with data lines we plan to show A8 to A15 we also will be showing the status of address latch enable along with IO slash M read write S0 and S1 now if you have watched my previous tutorial on machine cycle and timing diagrams you'll know that uh, we need to place the contents of the program counter onto the address lines in the first T state so in the first T state we want the multiplexed address data lines to act as address lines so we'll make ALE as 1 in the first T state so that will make these lines as address lines we'll write down 0 0 because we are going to 20 and a higher byte higher order address bus will have 20h in the second t state we toggle 
the pins so that they become data lines they'll carry the content of the location 2000 edge which actually is the opcode so we'll bring the opcode to edge into the microprocessor in the third T state and then we'll let it decode in the fourth T state and same goes with the higher order address bus bringing the content into the microprocessor would require us to make the read line active the write would remain inactive all the time and S0 and S1 will remain 1 1 and of course this is a memory related operation so IO slash M will be active low we're storing uh, we're bringing the data from the memory that is why M slash will be low and in the next machine cycle where we would want to co copy the contents of the accumulator into the memory location which is being pointed by BC register so we we could simply place the contents of C on the lower order address bus and the contents of B on the higher order address bus to make the full address and of course in the first T state of this machine cycle we'll make ALE1 and in the second T state we will write the contents of accumulator which are XX by the way and then we'll place it in the memory location in the third T state now in order to write the contents of accumulator in the external memory location we would want our write pin to go active and it will go low to become active and read would remain inactive because this it has got nothing to do with bringing anything from the memory and the rest of the things are pretty simple we'll make S0 as 0, S1 as 1 now this is opcode fetch machine cycle this combination is for memory write machine cycle so that is how we we bring the data we send the da data we control the address and data lines by ALEs we we place the contents into registers of microprocessor and memory by controlling read and write signals and the whole operation is governed by the status signals S0 and S1 so that was an example which I had in mind to illustrate timing diagrams for a little more complicated scenario and I hope this tutorial was of some help to you and I'd like to mention special thanks to all those viewers who've supported me in this tutorial series by liking sharing and subscribing to um, the videos here thank you so much for watching this video have a good day and a good life bye